Tio please. Hey there, this is Tio bringing another Kerbal Space Program video and today I'm showing you a really fun build that I put together for another series, but um, I, I like to feature the, the initial launch and preparation of some of these crafts uh, as standalone videos. So here you see my large SSTO and I'm planning to send this to Lathe and so that means it's got to be interplanetary capable, which is uh, not, a, not an easy feat. And because I'm going for a cargo SSTO, I need this thing to be ginormous and I need it to have lots of empty space. So I decided that uh, that cargo bay, that cargo slot rather in the middle, um, I'll utilize that space to fit this thing with um, an interplanetary stage that can decouple. So the SSTO itself uh, just has to get into orbit. And I know if it can orbit, Kerbin, it'll be able to orbit lathe. So this is, I think, only the second time I attempt to get this thing in the orbit. And about, I say attempt. Uh, the first time it went, it went fine, and uh, this time it'll go fine as well. I've, uh, I've stopped using um, exclusively rapier engines because those, um, I forget the names, but those, those, uh, those other air breathing engines there in the middle, the, the, the four on the inside, um, they have really, really good thrust compared to just the rapiers. So uh, I tend to use those to get myself up to the 500 plus meters per second that you need for the rapiers to actually become viable. So um, so yeah, like I said, I had flown this design once before, got into orbit and said, yeah, it's time to, to get this thing ready for lathe and uh, go ahead and record myself. So uh, just getting to circulation velocity now. With SSTOs, you want to, um, you, you're trying to, um, to fly as efficiently as possible because then you know they're challenging in a sense with all their extra mass to to get into orbit so I tend to do longer burns until right at the uh, apoapsis and um not the most efficient flight profile but it uh got me into orbit and still got some fuel to spare so i know that this would be a good design for a lathe and there she is i think she looks nice so time to send up my interplanetary stage. Like I said, this is just going to be a rocket that's got more uh, vacuum efficiency that can fit in that little slot right down the middle of the cargo SSTO. So and this is my uh, career mode. So sometimes I'll, I'll keep costs in mind, although uh, I've got lots and lots of credits at this point in my career mode. So uh, I'm not quite as wasteful as I would be in my sandbox or uh, other uh, game modes, but uh, I'm also not super stingy either because I'm, I'm it's a late game. I've got all the ports unlocked, so let's go ahead and get these babies made it up. So the intent here was uh, for that middle stage, I'm sorry, that interplanetary stage to be able to dock directly like that and use maybe the rest of the fuel in the Rhino stage, but it wasn't long enough, so uh, I will have to decouple the interplanetary stage from the rhino stage. That rhino stage wasn't intended necessarily to, to make the trip. Um, it would have just been nice to use the rest of that fuel. But this was this was the intended payload, the interplanetary stage, with just the four nuclear engines. Like I said, they're um, they're the kings or queens rather of vacuum efficiency. So I think this is a pretty cool shot. Sometimes when I have those uh, views of the cockpit, it's it's actually a splice, just a little uh, recording trick, <laughs> so you don't see. But uh, yeah, I probably hit F5 and had to redo this on at least once or twice just to, to get it done right. So um, this time I realized that if I can, that, that there I've undetached the Rhino stage. If I slap a, um, a docking port, I can attach my vehicle to the, to the, to the, combined rhino and nuclear stages and drain all the fuel out of that rhino stage. The rhino stage doesn't have a probe core. So that's why I um, had to revert the save. And uh, I'm going to drain all that fuel out. Then I can stage the decoupler, ditch the rhino and its empty fuel tanks. And then I can continue docking the interplanetary, inter interplanetary stage rather with the SSTU. So not a whole lot of fuel savings, but again, this is this is career mode, and also, um, I've gotten into orbit so many times, I've done these types of 
rendezvous so many times. If I can save myself a little bit of effort, it's it's usually worth it. Um, the game is fun, don't get me wrong. I love the, the whole act of performing these rendezvous and doing this. But sometimes it would be nice if I just had more fuel. Just give me more fuel, please. So uh, let's try that again. Let's dock the interplanetary stage with the middle of my SSTO. So unfortunately, those rhino stage, that rhino stage, those two tanks were not enough to fill up the SSTO. And uh, I'd like for it to be f full just, just in case. I mean, I think this is enough to get me to lathe. But uh, the last thing I want is to have to refuel this thing in orbit of Jewel or anything like that. So... I'll uh, I'll refuel the SSTO as well. Now that I've uh, once I, once I get this docked in a second here. So um, again, I've got an engineer on board. I uh, I absolutely love this feature where I can perform EVA construction. So I actually have a ladder here with that in, in mind. This is again a cargo SSTO, so I've got some extra cargo bays for ports. And I've got lots of extra struts. So struts are your friend. I just put two, one strut on each side of the back of the vehicle or the back of the uh, interplanetary stage. That in conjunction with the decoupler in the front, and that's a pretty secure load that's not going to really go anywhere. Otherwise, that might be a, a flex point. Those those large decouplers, as large as they are, they, they can still be a soft point and um, causes the vehicle to act like a spaghetti monster, which I don't like. So, um, so far, so so far, I really do enjoy this design. Um, I have. A few uses for it in mind once it gets to lathe. The, uh, and the idea is for it to bring squirrely large payloads down to the surface and hopefully kind of pinpoint the landing zone. I do need a, a crane or some other vehicle to like really pinpoint the landing zone, but hey, that could be one of the reasons to use the SST or I could bring a crane down to the surface. So uh, the rest of this footage, I'll, I'll be refueling my, uh, my SST because it's got those for rapier engines so it can help the nuclear engines get to lathe they'll have a definitely more thrust than those nuclear engines so uh my my burn to lathe won't be or my burn to jewel rather won't be quite so long so another feature i'm looking forward to with ksp2 is being able to perform burns with um with accelerated time with with time warp that's that's gonna be a huge plus so these Nuclear engines and even more efficient engines that they'll be introducing won't be as prohibitive. You can you can use them without having to film a, a forty minute video versus a, a ten minute video, or in this case, an eight minute video. So there you see, I've got my vehicle all fueled up, ready to go to lathe, and you guys will be seeing that in a future video. Sorry to not provide the the cool footage, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this footage. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I appreciate you tuning in. And I hope to see you guys next.